March is Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, and it highlights the importance of getting a colonoscopy. Anthony Carpino is at the Georgia Cancer Center to share some very important information on this. Good morning, Anthony. Well, good morning, Zena. Yeah, we're here at AU's campus at the Georgia Cancer Center, and we're going to be talking about well, one of those, you know, topics that might be a little bit hard to talk about. But fortunately, I have Dr. Vega with us this morning. Dr. Vega, thanks so much for joining us. Let's talk about the basics for a second here. What is colon cancer, and what should people kind of learn along the way of that process? Well, colon cancer actually is, in the, in the country, the third most common cancer, both in men and women. Uh, nationally. It happens at about a, at 150,000 patients per year and actually kills 52,500 Americans. Oh, wow. So there are signs and symptoms that you see, including change in how you move your bowels, rectal bleeding, or losing weight and not knowing why. Polyps are growths that happen because the body replicates itself yeah. and doesn't have a chance to fix itself, and those polyps can develop into cancer. We do colonoscopy to try to remove those polyps before they get there. In medicine, it's one of the few things where you can actually do a procedure, take something out, and cure disease. It's a wonderful thing. Absolutely, and we're talking about, you know, it's being up there as far as, you know, one of the most uh, popular kind of cancers, if you will. Who's most at risk? We mentioned both men and women. Uh, is there a certain kind of category that you find more of in certain folks than others? That's true, there are people All right, looks like we're having some technical issues over there. So if we can get Anthony back, maybe we'll pop him up if we have time, but certainly important information. Georgia Cancer Center, be sure to check them out. I think what, what they were going to say, some of the stuff was uh, 45 is the new 50, guys and gals. So if, uh, if uh, you're 50 years old and you haven't gotten your uh, colonoscopy yet, you might want to consider it too. So especially if you're 45, move on to that. All right, I think we're going back live to him. Okay, all right. Let's go back to you, Anthony. Do we have you? All right, we have you. Listen, when I was doing college, yep. I All right. Sorry about that, guys. You know, technical difficulties. We love technology, of course, right here in the morning. Sorry to interrupt you, Dr. Vega. We're talking about um, some folks that might be a little bit more susceptible to this type of cancer versus others. That's right. Those individuals that have a family history of colon cancer, or if you have some genetic syndromes where there are multiple cancers uh, in the family, that's, those are two main risks. Mm -hmm. And then another one is, like myself, who have a family history of someone with colon polyps. That puts you at higher risk as well. Those people should get screened every five years. For the average individual that doesn't have those factors, it's every 10 years. Mm -hmm. And starting at age 45, because now we're seeing an alarming trend in younger individuals, even uh, before, before the age of 45, having colon cancer. So the uh, American Cancer Society, as well as other guidelines, other societies in the field, recommend getting screened at 45 to start. Now, colonoscopy is one way to do the screening, mm -hmm. but also you can do it by some non-invasive tests, like that blue box you see on television mm -hmm. that talks to your colon guard, <laughs> yeah. or a fit test, depending on your insurance coverage. A fit test is easier and less costly, but still, do that or Cologuard, mm -hmm. either one, if they're positive, that brings you to me to do the procedure. So there's more than one type of way to get screened beforehand. It's not jumping right into the colonoscopy. Now for folks that just might have to kind of go that route, can you explain how the colonoscopy works for us? Well, what you do is you um, see someone in the office or you could be uh, ordered directly from your primary physician. You would clean yourself out doing a laxative and some clear liquid diet for a day or two. Then you'd come in to a procedure area just like this, lay on the stretcher with your head this way, sort of imagine yourself on the couch with your left shoulder down. Mm -hmm. The screen is what we look at, and we use the colonoscopy, the colonoscope, to go into the colon. It's about the size of my finger, so it's not something very invasive, but it actually is allowed to go through the colon because your colon has turns. It has three turns that we have to negotiate around to get to the beginning of your colon, the end of your small intestine. And then we start looking in detail four polyps that show up as abnormal appearing lining of the colon. Mm -hmm. And we take those out, send it to the lab. Once we find that out, if you're a person that has benign polyps, great. If you have polyps that had the potential to turn into cancer, then you'd come back sooner than the 10-year interval. And God forbid, if we find cancer, we try to cut it out or mark it so that our surgical colleagues can do what they do. All right. Okay, Anthony. Well, thank you. I'm glad we got to um, hear from the doctor just a little bit I more about that. I think.